Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Why don't you sit back, grab a beer, and join me, and I'll tell you all the stuff your mama never told you about the Sog Power Pines. All right, my friends, the reason I feel the beer is in order <laughs> is because this is going to be a long video. I got a lot to say about this. There's a lot to know about this that I feel like no one's talking about. This is like got to be the most over-reviewed tool on the internet. And here it is, looking amazing, with so many facts we have not heard before. First of all, we will start from the outside. This pocket clip is excellent, it has good tension, and this angle on it is good for putting it in the right-handed pocket. You can imagine how my right-handed pocket would be shaped like this, and it keeps it in a good spot, sometimes on an angle if you put it up to the higher section of the pocket so that it kind of goes into the crease where your leg folds. Very smart um, positioning here. Obviously, this lanyard is right here. Mine is really tight. Now, I got to be honest with you, this is my second power pint. And the reason it's my second is because the first one got lost. I don't even know how that happened. On this tool today, I am working from the outside to the inside, if you hadn't guessed. And the next thing we're going to get to is on this side, the ruler. So now I could talk about the ruler at several different points, but let me just say from here to here is one centimeter, okay? The equivalency over here, I mean, this is an inch, but it's really hard to see because the last mark is in the plastic. Note that these zeros here and these zeros here have nothing to do with anything with the ruler. I am not sure what they're doing, but they're definitely not doing anything that has to do with the ruler. Now, the weird part about this ruler, the fact that this is one centimeter and going to here is not one centimeter, has, is an artifact of how the ruler is constructed. So this is the not, well, this is the one centimeter side. This is the not one centimeter side. So it's one centimeter right here, but if you look, there are not 10 lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six lines. There are six millimeters marked out here, and the centimeter mark is right here and it lines up with this line that has a zero which means nothing it's not actually a zero and the reason is because this ruler starts from the end so it's like a depth gauge here but that gives you these marks on the side that you can see and yet they do not give you the ability to actually measure things you have to come over to the other side and then you have an entire centimeter here and actually this is the last marking 15 right here but it does go up to 16 they just didn't mark it and this is your whole centimeter so this side is a depth gauge, if you want to measure there, and this side measures one centimeter this way. And actually it goes a little more, but then it gets hard to see because you get into this section of the tool. All right, next, let's come into this. So everybody knows this is a not just the joint here, but it's also a protractor. And it is a little hard to see, but we've got 30, 60, and 180 over here. And on this side, we've got 45, I wish I could get it to focus a little better, 90 and 180 again. And the opposite side is the same, 80, 90, 45, 30, 60, 180. The thing that's annoying about this is there are four sites, each of which can have three numbers on it apparently, and they only went up to 180 on all of these. Like 180 is marked four times. Likewise, the 30s, 60s, 45s, and 90s are all marked four times. Now, the way you do this is you line up this little mark with the hatch mark, hash mark I mean. So that should be 30 right there. And it's 30 degrees is this angle that's being drawn right in here. Notably, this is not an anarchy symbol, as I originally thought. No, nothing like that. All right, so now let's try one on this side. All right, you got to look where the hash mark is, because it's not always in the same place. So, if I'm seeing this correctly, this should be 90. And yeah, that does look like, you know, approximately 90 degrees there. It's not awesome for measuring. It's obviously more good for estimating. But it is kind of a cool feature. However, I do think it's too bad that they missed some extra stuff here. Now, one thing that no one seems to talk about is how awesome this looks. See, you might have heard about this angle thing, right? I think people know about that. But the fact that uh, it has all of these on here, people sometimes don't take the time to see that it does have five different angles it can measure for you. 
Now, take a look at this. This is so interesting to me how this is constructed because you have a couple different joints. This joint goes all the way through, and so does this one. This one just goes through the outside. It's just through this black piece and then the outside layer of metal. So watch as we open the tool how you see this back section. It's not even attached to anything, right? It's there for a reason, but it is not attached to anything right now. And it comes out like this, and we have this big opening here. And as we start to close this, it gets sucked back in here. Now here, we have our crimper. People do mention that from time to time. It's right in there. But check this out. Right now, we've got them all closed up. It just looks like a pliers, but as we open it, this part starts to stick out, and then it's gonna make this big space into which these will close. And of course, this is the bit holder. The bit is held in by one magnet right there. And I'll tell you, this bit holder is said to fix the problem of this multi-tool. And the problem of this multi-tool is that it bizarrely has no flathead driver other than a jewelry-sized flathead driver. Now you could store one in here and just carry it like this. Now I'm gonna tell you, people who tell you that have never tried it, because I tried really, really hard. And I gotta tell you, people look at you really weird when you keep dropping screwdriver bits all over the floor every single time you take out your multi-tool. Because if you open this at all, it does fall out. The magnet is not strong enough to like hold it in when you're like using the tool and not keeping it closed. It'll stay in there when you're carrying it, but when you go to use it, it will fall out way too many times and it's awkward, embarrassing, and annoying. So I didn't like that. Now what I did try that didn't work by the way, didn't look good or didn't work well, is using a lanyard to attach a little capsule onto here and I kept the flathead in there because I really wanted this to work because to me without a flathead, it's kind of dumb. But now, today I'm gonna show you why this doesn't have a flathead. It's gonna be very amazing. All right, now let us keep moving inward here. We talked about the ruler now I'm sure you know that while this can be pressed to unlock the locking tools, which are all from the outside, the other way to unlock them is by continuing to open other tools. And of course you know it has the different kinds of plier heads and a wire cutter there, and I showed you the crimper. Now, let's talk about this. This tool is caught, strangely, between right-handedness and left-handedness. Let's take a look. So here we have, and it is possible, I sometimes can do it, there we go, it has a one-handed opening blade whoop, that does lock in place. And currently that should be locked. Let's see. Yep. All right. So it is a right-handed tool in the sense that it opens with your right hand. Okay. Um, and to unlock it again, I can push this or I can open another tool. And likewise, on the other side, we have a one-handed opening serrated blade. Which honestly, I don't think I ever used any serrated blades on these. And for this one, I'll just open the other tool next to it and now I can close this. The reason there is no flathead is related to the scissors here. So let's talk about the scissors. Do I have another multi-tool on me? No. I'm going to pause this while I go and get one because I got to show you this. Okay, I'm back and I have a scattering of scissors is here. Let me get this one open. All right, I have a regular scissors by Scotch. I have a Leatherman Micra. I haven't actually really looked at these, so um, I checked out a bunch, but not these in particular. And then here I have my Swiss Champ. All right, so we'll take a look at the Swiss Champ, which is considered to have a good scissors. Notice that the right-handed part, so I'm holding it in my right hand, the right-handed closing part is located on the top when it's oriented like this. Same thing with the Micra. And same thing with this. The thumb part is gonna be oriented on the top. And it doesn't matter if you flip it over because then it's the finger part, you're not looking at the thumb part. So the thumb part's on top. Now with this, look at this, the thumb part's on the bottom. And even when you flip it over, the thumb part is on the bottom. This is a left-handed scissors. Can you see how all, how all of these are made the same except for that one? Why is it a lefty scissors? This has to do with why there is no flathead on here. Now, this is actually really amazing. And once I understood this, I was like kind of in awe. So we're gonna start it by looking at all of these tools over here. And I don't know that we need to go through them all. I'll probably mention them all as we go. What I'm gonna do is open these tools and I'm gonna to try to make the back of this kind of flat here. Now, look in here. 
this is where the plier head is obviously folded in. And can you see like we need to get tools to fit around here. And like on this side, it's gonna be flat on the outside and the tools are all gonna fit right around that plier head. Now there's room on the left and the right for a long tool to go in there. So here we've got the knife on the far left that's gonna go in, okay? And then on the far right, we have the file that can fit right in there. Now that is very tight there. There's not a lot of room. What we have here is a little space that's more space at the bottom, less space at the top, and these two outside sections have more space than in the middle. So you can see here we have the package opener, and this is angled to the outside so that where, when I close this, I'll try to get a really good view here. As I close this and we need to fit this into the right, it fits right around that pliers head there. Check that out, that is awesome. I love this construction. Likewise, we have this weird awl, which has an angle to it. So you can see it's cut this way. That angle is cut the opposite of that package opener, and it also will fit right around the plier head. And then here we've got just something that kind of fills that space up. Everything here is pretty evenly spaced. The knife and the file are about the same thickness. So are the second tools in on each side. So this one is sitting right in the middle. And this jeweler's flathead is the only flathead we will find on this tool unless we're carrying a flathead with us. And that closes up nicely. However, just to kind of recap this, when we open it, we see the inverse of this, right? So here we have the plier head sticking out, and here we can kind of see, as we look at these tools, this space where the plier head would sit in there. Kind of move that around so you can kind of get the idea. See what I mean? So when I close this up, it fills up the missing space, and it just makes the maximum amount of tool space that can be done here. Now, we're gonna see the same thing on the other side. All right, now on this side, we've got this space on the left and we've got a blade to put in there. So that is relatively thin. However, the scissors really can only go in one of the long spaces because this is a really small tool, right? So it can't go just anywhere and it's gonna have to go on the long section. However, because we're fitting it around this plier head, we need the inside, the part that's gonna go deepest here to be lined up similar to this blade, the far outside needs to be where this arm is right here that is gonna go into this spot. And that is why this is a lefty scissors. So that as the plier head is there, this is actually keeping out of the way of the plier head. If it were switched around and it were a righty scissors, the part that's going in first would be the one that is farther that way and it would hit the plier head, okay? Does that make sense? So. That is why this is a lefty scissors. Now, I'm just gonna take a little break here from looking at these tools before I tell you why there's not a flat head if you haven't figured it out already. Um, this tool you can use with your right hand. Now, let's just talk about this. When I'm using this one with my right hand, the natural instinct is for the tip of your thumb to meet the tip of your index finger. Our brains and our muscles are constructed for that. So as I close this, the muscles in my hand try to make this meet this, which, which pushes the handle of this that way to the left which then, because there's a pivot here, this forces the blade to the right so that it meets the other blade. On the other hand, here we've got this guy. If I try to push my thumb to meet my fingertip over here, it's gonna push this handle to the left, which will push the blade to the right, where it will not meet the other blade. See what I mean? Like, so if my thumb's pushing that way, the blade is gonna come out. So what I need to do when I'm using a lefty scissors is push my thumb, like try to think about meeting my thumb to this knuckle. And then this works much better. And here, I have a leaf sitting here. Let us try it out. So I'm gonna push it towards my knuckle there. Oh, look, it works like a regular scissors. Now, honestly, this way, it's probably gonna work like a regular scissors too. Yep, it was fine. But when people have a problem with this, that is one of the problems with this scissors. Now, I did find another problem with this scissors as well. This is a very, like, um, harsh angle here. There's, like, no way for the paper or the leaf you're cutting to escape. So as I make my first cut, it might be fine, okay? But then as I'm trying to come up and make my second cut and keep feeding it through, well, this leaf is pretty soft, but it has a, oh, I got a leaf in my beer. <laughs> Hazards of outdoor recording. Not even drinking it. Um, 
it has a hard time getting the paper to go past here. I think it's easier with leaves, but I didn't bring any paper out. So, all right, now I'm not gonna make you wait for me to go get that. Let us finish looking at this and see a couple other things. First of all, why did they just not move the scissors to the left? Because if they did, they could make a normal right-handed scissors. Well, I'm sure it's because they want this to be a one-handed opening blade because I mean, I don't know. I don't know if people really cry out for one-handed opening scissors. Now, to me, I would, because this is a secondary blade, and I would probably not use this blade very much, and I would rather have a right-handed scissors, especially if it worked better, but that just didn't happen. All right, so I'm going to put that back so I don't cut myself, because I already have, like, three cuts that you might be able to see right now. Now, as I line these up, you're going to see the same pattern here that we saw on the other side. You're going to see that these tools are organized in the opposite of the space of the of the plier head here they fill up the space so here we've got the can opener which is narrowed down on this side this side is planed down and it has to be that way to be a righty can opener lefty can openers do not work left-handed people have a hard time with can openers sometimes there you go okay then the scissors we already talked about then here we have our well I'll just put this guy in the middle here this is our Phillips head and it is going kind of to the left of middle but it fits right under that plier head as you can see it just fits that in and that's why it is such a short Phillips. Now this tool is actually in some SOG um, brochure talking about how this is a flathead and it has a flathead on here which some of the other power tools have but I think the problem is this as we fold this in here I'm going to just open this so we can see without cutting myself possibly or possibly with I mean you know it's exciting if you don't know if I'm going to cut myself right um, okay as we fold this in here we're going to see that this is barely going to meet here there is no extra room for this tool let me pull this blade out so you can see that better See how there is no extra room. For this to have any kind of lip to grab the edge of the bottle, it has to be this low and this short. And this has to get this narrow out here so it can actually get around the lip of the cap you are trying to lift. Which means that this is gonna always be really, really narrow through here. And I think that's why, because while this width right here might make a reasonable flathead screwdriver, it's putting a lot of torque across this tiny little piece here, and I think that is why they did not give us a flathead screwdriver. Let's see. So, I think I've given you all my revelations about this. The final revelations that no one talks about, I will show you in uh, one last video segment. All right, you guys, this thing is freaking fun to play with. I am not kidding you. When people say this is fidgety, now, neither of the ones I've had, like, fling open, really. Oh, I guess this one kind of does. So that's, I guess, kind of cool. But I love to create this into different structural shapes. It can balance like that. It can balance like, well, no, it can, I swear. It can balance like this. You can do all sorts of crazy things with this. My friend actually uses this ability of it to stay in place to hold wires while she is soldering. It was so cool to me. I went out to breakfast with her and she's like, why do you have my multi-tool? I was like, ooh, I was just gonna show this to you. So this thing is just way too fun. There are way too many cool things to do with this. It is so enjoyable to carry this tool. I just wish that they had been able to find a way to put a flathead on there. If you guys, oh, and I should also say, some people who love this tool the most have made a modification where they turned that piece I showed you on the cap lifter into a flathead screwdriver. You guys, I am not ready to do this mod myself, and I'm definitely not willing to recommend that people buy this tool with the plan of doing that mod. But for pure, I'm going to say engineering enjoyment, this is just such a fun tool to have, to play with, to look at, to observe. I hope you enjoyed looking at it with me today. Have a great day. But before I go, this pairs great with a Casio AW80, part matte finish, part plastic, and all high function, and neither has a screwdriver.